purpose. But can I tell someone today that we are not put on this earth to wake up, go to work, come home, watch a show, go to sleep. You have a purpose, a God-ordained purpose. For we are God's masterpiece. Someone needs to get that stamped on their heart today. You are God's masterpiece. You're his masterpiece. He designed you for a reason. You have a purpose. Are you allowing yourself to live it? Or are you just allowing hurry to, to rob you? What's up, Bloom Church? Mmm. Mmm. I think y'all got better. I think y'all got better. What's up, Bloom Church? Yes, 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 yes. Hey, production, can you switch over to my notes really quick? All right, guys, I am so incredibly excited that you are here today. We say this every week, but man, do we mean it. From the bottom of our hearts, you could be anywhere. The fact that you're here, it means the world to us. And we are honored to worship with you today. Before we go any further, though, could we welcome everyone watching online or our Bloom Church online campus? Come on. Yes, yes, yes. And I got a couple announcements before we dive into uh, to the word today. Announcement number one, tomorrow we got Bloom Kids Summer Blast kicking off. It's blasting off. I'm quick with them today. What do you all think about that, right? Diving in. If you got kids, Listen, kids, if you're in here, nag your parents. It's going to be so incredibly powerful. The team has been working so hard to make sure that it is the most out-of-this-world experience. It's a day camp for your kids. You can still get signed up. Just go through these doors, go to the kids' lobby, and ask about the Summer Kids Blast Off. Secondly, this Sunday is the last Sunday that you can get signed up for Serve Day. Are you all excited about Serve Day? Come on. (laughs) Serve Day is going down next weekend. And listen, this is going to be, I can't stress it enough. This is going to be such a powerful time for our church family, but also for our community. This is an an incredible opportunity for us to take the church outside of these four walls, go be the hands and feet of Jesus and serve the people of our community. There's so many different projects that you can get signed up for. You can go to either lobby and and you can see all of them. You can sign up for whichever one you want to do. But seriously, I'm so excited to serve alongside of you guys. And I'm so excited to truly show that we are for the Ozarks. Amen. Come on. All right. Before we dive in, can we just go before God and can we just ask him to fill this room like never before and remove anything that might get in the way of us receiving the word that he has for us today? Can we all hold out our hands in a posture to receive from him today? Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for who you are, what you've done and what you're doing, God. We are so thankful for the opportunity to come into your house and worship your name. And Father, right now, I just pray that you would make me a vessel. God, that these are your words, not mine, Father. And God, I pray that you would just remove anything that might get in the way of us receiving what you have for us today. God, that you would open our ears, open our minds, open our hearts to your word, Father. Bless our time together today. And we come expecting great things. We love you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' powerful name we pray. And all God's people this morning said, amen. Amen. All right, y'all, we are in week three of our sermon series, The Ruthless Elimination of hurry. Is anyone enjoying this series? Anyone getting any fruit from it? This series, it's inspired and it's based off of a a book by John Mark Comer. And let me just say, we have these books for sale. If you go to either Welcome Center, you can pick up a book. And we're selling, they're at cost. We don't want anything from you. We just want something for you. This book changed my life and I know it will do the same for yours. But uh, this book, it it reveals this prevailing issue in our society that we've been talking about, busyness, right? This state of hurry and and, and, and busyness that we we all deal with, it's it's a threat in our lives as believers. It's a threat in our lives as as followers of Jesus. Remember what Dallas Willard said, and and this is kind of our, our theme quote for this series, but he said, hurry is the great enemy of spiritual life in our day. 
It's the great enemy. It could be the most effective way that the enemy tries to come at you. Remember what Corey Ten Boom said week one. She said, if the devil can't make you sin, he'll make you what? Busy. And so many of us, we fall into that trap simply by just allowing too many trivial things, things that don't matter on our plates, things that, that rob us of time, that rob us of pouring intentional time into, into our purpose, into what we've been created to do. And here's the severity. If we don't do something about it, then we're giving the enemy a foothold in our life. I love what Pastor Chris Hodges said. He said, if you're not fighting the devil every day, then he's working harder than you. Get that. If we're not combating the enemy's attempts to get us to trip up every single day, then he's working harder than us. And so last week we talked about a, a, a spiritual discipline or, or a habit, or I like the term spiritual rhythm that we need in our lives to, to combat this hurry, this, this busyness that the enemy is going to try and trip us up with. And this was a, a, a spiritual rhythm that, that would help us step into the presence of God to access his power, his strength, the, the, the promises, the, the fullness of God. So last week we talked about silence and solitude being able to, to quiet the external and the internal noise and being able to go consistently to a quiet, solitary place to spend real, intentional, genuine time with God. And this is something that Jesus did consistently. It was so important to him because this is what equipped him with everything that he needed that we talked about last week to live deliberately, meaning on purpose. This is how he was able to live on his purpose, to go and spend time with God. That's what refilled him. And today we're going to talk about another spiritual rhythm that Jesus did, that he lived out that'll help us slow down in this life. Now, it's funny, I heard something. I can't remember if it was last week or the week before last, but someone said, I'm afraid to slow down. I'm afraid to slow down because if I slow down, I, I won't get as much done. Anyone feel that? But what I want you to, if you, if, if you connect to that at all, what I want you to remember is whose rhythms we're looking at. We're looking at Jesus's rhythms. We're looking at Jesus's habits, Jesus's spiritual disciplines, the savior of the world. This is the guy who was sent on earth and accomplished more than we could ever ask or ever fathom or ever imagine. And he did so by doing this. Remember, he was never once hurried, but he had a lot on his plate, right? He was to save all mankind. He had quite a bit on his plate. But here's the beautiful thing, is if we take these spiritual rhythms that, that Jesus himself did, and we look at those and we actually act on them, they're a gift to us. And it's a gift that comes with a promise. If you're taking notes, write this down. The promise, if we actually apply these to our lives, is we can be less hurried and more productive. Now, that doesn't make sense in culture today, right? You can be less hurried and more productive. But I'm going to say that sounds extremely appealing to me. Anybody else? Are you all with me today? You all can talk back to me today. That's okay. We got to be real, right? We hurry. But why do we hurry? We hurry to get more things done. But why do we feel this need, this, this deep longing to get more things done? If I can be real and I can be transparent with you, for, for me, it stems from my childhood. See, my mom, she was raised in a, in a very unhealthy household. It was, a, it was a farm family and it was a family that was extremely abusive, both, both verbally and, and physically. And if they didn't work hard enough, they got abused. Well, when I was growing up, I remember I could never work hard enough to get that seal of approval. I was always the lazy one. I could never, I could never work hard enough. And that stayed with me into my adulthood. And I'll be honest with you guys, my tendency 
is to fall into a workaholic because I'm just chasing after that seal of approval. I think it's the fear of failure. Like if I'm not, if I'm not producing, then I'm not worth it. If I'm not working hard and there's not fruit to be shown, then I'm, then I'm worthless, I'm, I'm, I'm failing. If I'm not productive, then, I'm, then I'm, I'm not worth it. And so I work harder and harder and harder and I put in longer days and, and, and for what? What do I leave in the dust? My marriage, my relationships, my family, maybe my true purpose. But here's the thing, is all of those hurry motivators, the fear of failure, the lack of self-confidence, all of those those lies that, that I tell myself are completely against what God says about each and every one of us. See, ch- check this out. I know that my God ha- knew me before he formed me in my mother's womb. Before I was born, he set me apart and appointed me as a prophet to the nations. Before we could ever get on this earth and try and mess it up, he said, no, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet. Bef- you are God's chosen treasure. Priests who are kings, a spiritual nation set apart as God's devoted ones. He called you out of darkness to experience his marvelous light. And now he claims you as his very own. Can I tell you today, this is what he thinks of each and every one of you in here. These are the promises of God. This is what he wants to tell you consistently. But let me ask you this question. How can we know this and how can we remind ourselves of this if we aren't spending intentional, genuine time with God? Because here's what I know. If you're taking notes, write this down. You can't fully access the promises of God without following the rhythms of God. I want you to get that today. You can't fully access the promises of God without following the rhythms of God. See, that's the problem. Lean in here. We want the life that Jesus promised, but we don't want to adopt the lifestyle. Don't miss that. We want the life that Jesus promised. We want the rich and the satisfying life, but we don't want to do the things in which he says, this is how you do it. And we can't have both. We can't have both. So we're going to dive into another rhythm today, another spiritual rhythm. And this rhythm today actually comes from the 10 commandments. If you have your Bibles, you can open it up. Exodus chapter 20. This is God's top 10 list. And I'm just, quick review. We're just gonna read through them really quick. These are in order. Number one, worship only one God. Number two, have no idols. Number three, don't dishonor God's name. We're gonna leave number four blank for a second. Number five, honor your father and your mother. Number six, don't murder, don't commit adultery, don't steal, don't lie, don't covet what doesn't belong to you. So this is God's top 10 list, right? He says, hey, if you want to live well, here's the Ten Commandments. Let me ask you today, and y'all can talk back to me today. Would you feel comfortable breaking any of these? Like, would y'all, would y'all intentionally break any of these? No. Of course not. Well, pastor, of course I wouldn't lie and I wouldn't cheat and I would not steal. We wouldn't intentionally break any of these, right? No, that would be insane. But let's throw number four up there. Every seven days, you must take one day to rest, no work allowed. Now tell me. Did your answer change? Because the importance of this list did not. But for some reason, For some reason, we think this fourth commandment is the one commandment that we can break, and it's okay. God, yeah, he he was, yeah, he was serious about all the rest of them, but that number four one, no, 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 no. We we don't need an actual Sabbath is what he's calling us to, a day of rest. And let me say, I'm saying we in this because I've been guilty 
For me, it's the texts, it's the emails. It's always having it on my, on my, in my phone, right? I got to refresh my emails to make sure that I don't miss anyone. I don't let the ball drop. I got to answer this person back. It's not going to disrupt my day. It'll just take two seconds for me to reply, right? But a true Sabbath, a, a, a true day of rest, see, for whatever reason in our society and in our culture, we've glorified breaking this commandment. Like we talked about this a little bit week one, but have you ever asked someone how they're doing and they say, oh, I'm good, I'm just busy, right? But have you ever heard someone take it to the next level and they're like, oh, I'm good, I'm busy, right? I haven't had a day off in four weeks. You ever heard that? And that little jig, that was like a badge of honor, right? I haven't had a day off in four weeks. Would we do that with any other commandment? Like, Hey, how you doing? Oh man, I'm good. I'm busy. I've cheated on my wife every week for four weeks. No. <laughs> no, we would not. We wouldn't do that with any of the others, but for some reason we made it okay. We've glorified it. We just disregard number four. Listen to this quote by A.J. Swoboda, though. He says this. He says, The Sabbath has largely been forgotten by the church. He's talking about the capital C church, the, the church body, right? Which has uncritically mimicked the rhythms of the industrial and success-obsessed West. The result? Our road-worry, exhausted churches have largely failed to integrate Sabbath into their lives as vital elements of Christian discipleship. Watch this. It says, It's not as though we do not love God. We love God deeply. We just don't know how to sit with God anymore. Hurry is ruling our lives. Busyness is ruling our lives. And we just don't know how to be present and sit with God anymore. He goes on and he says, we have become perhaps the most emotionally exhausted, psychologically overworked, spiritually malnourished people in history. Do y'all feel any of that? Like, man, I'm just exhausted. I feel overworked. I feel empty. I feel, I feel tired. And here's the thing. God gave us the remedy, yet we just don't take it. But I want to read the, the commandment. The, the, the fourth commandment straight from Scripture in Exodus chapter 20. Here's what it says. Remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. You have six days each week for your ordinary work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household may do any work. This includes you, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, your livestock, and any foreigners living among you. For in six days the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and everything in them. But on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart as holy. Remember the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. You got six days for whatever you do for work. But the seventh is mine is what he's saying. And this is kind of a cool note. If you look at Exodus chapter 20, this, this particular commandment is the one that, that they go in deepest on, right? Like they don't give an explanation or any detail to this extent on any other. They, they give a little bit more deeper explanation on idols, but, but in regards to the commandments, this is the longest commandment out there. So obviously this is a really important one and they want us to lean in and truly get this. And if you're taking notes today, to define what a Sabbath is, write this in your notes. The Sabbath, a Hebrew, the Hebrew word for Sabbath is Shabbat, which means to stop. Simply to stop or, or to cease. It's a day to, to stop, to stop working, to stop wanting, to stop worrying. So let's read the scripture like this. If we replace the word, you have six days each week for your ordinary work, but the seventh day is a stopping day dedicated to the Lord your God. Let me just tell someone today, we need a day to stop. We need a day to slow down. We need a day, John Mark Comer says, 
to give our souls an opportunity to catch up to our bodies. And it's a day for us to get something called true rest. True rest. And it was so important that God commanded it. I, want, I really want to stress that. The Sabbath is a command from God. It wasn't a request. It's not a, hey, if you got time, would you? The Sabbath is a command. It was on God's top 10 list, right? And let me ask, do you feel rested? Truly rested. Like I'm not talking about sleep and and. and waking up from a good night. I'm talking about in your soul. Or do you feel exhausted? Do you have peace? A peace-filled soul? Or let me ask you this today. Could the reason that we feel so exhausted, the reason that we don't have peace, could it be because we're actually breaking one of God's 10 commandments? The writer of Hebrews said it like this. He said, make every effort to enter that rest. Everybody say every effort. Make every effort. It's that important that I want you to make every effort, ironically, work hard to rest well is what it's saying, right? And I'll be honest, ironing out a true Sabbath is going to take work. It's not an easy rhythm or a habit to form, but man, it's a necessary one. And it's gonna take intentionality and it's gonna take discipline and it's gonna take uh, 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 preparation and planning and self-control, but we have got to get back to a place where we practice a Sabbath. Or if you never have, you gotta start. Listen to what the writer of Hebrews says if we, if we don't. He says, so let us do our best to enter that rest. But if we disobey God as the people of Israel did, we will fall. If we disobey this commandment, we will fall. And we'll fall because we weren't designed to keep up with this hurry-filled, nonstop, always got to grind, I got to hustle, add another thing to my plate life that culture and society so enticingly tries to get us to live. We weren't designed to live like that. We see the importance in Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. In his taking care of us, it's so important that he will make us lie down to rest. And see, here's the thing is we were made in the image, in the, in the likeness of God. And if we go back to creation in Genesis chapter 2, God rested, right? Scripture says, by the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he what? Rested. Rested. One more time, he what? Rested. Rested. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it, he what? Rested. Rested. One more time, you all with me? He what? From all the work of creating that he had done. God rested. Did you catch that? The creator of the universe. Man, Tyler, I don't know. Rest is for the weak. No, 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 no. God rested. Man, Tyler, I don't know. I just need to stay busy. I just need to stay busy and then that'll fit. No, 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 no. God rested. Tyler, I don't know. I got this really high demanding job and I love it and it supports my family. No, 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 no. God rested. Tyler, I got little kids at home and I just don't think that's in the cards for me. No, 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 no. God rested. See, we can try and find any excuse and it'll be easy to find excuses that would deter us from from walking in this spiritual rhythm. But let me say this, pay very close attention. If there's some excuses that try and come up, I want you to pay very close attention to what that excuse is tied to because that could reveal a disordered heart. 
no, 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 I, 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 got, I got to work that extra day. No. Disordered heart. You're putting work that's more important than your spiritual relationship with Jesus. This was a command. God rested. And we need rest to experience the blessings of God. We said promises earlier, but if you're taking notes, write this down. You can't fully experience the blessings of God without following the rhythms of God. Think about the tithe principle. When we bring our tithe, our first 10% to God, he blesses the rest of the 90. The same is true with our days, right? Listen to this. If you practice a Sabbath, God will bless and do more with the six days that we have than we ever could with the seven days. If you practice a Sabbath, if you give him a full 24 hours, God will do more with your six than we ever could with our seven. Y'all want some proof? Y'all want some proof today? I'll give you some proof today. Okay, there's a, co- there's a few companies out there that only operate on a six-day work week. <sighs> Come on. Yeah, y'all, I don't even have to, f- y'all know who I'm talking about. Closed on Sunday. You know what I'm talking about? Chick-fil-A. And isn't there something about Chick-fil-A on a Sunday that just, I never crave Chick-fil-A except for on Sundays. It's like the forbidden fruit, right? Come on. It looks better on a Sunday. It tastes better on a Sunday. I need two volunteers. Who wants to vouch for me in this? Oh, yeah, Ryan, I got you. Heads up. All right, anybody on this side? I don't think I can make that throw. Uh, You guys, you want to try it? I'm going to need you to take a bite, though. Not bad, not bad. All right, Ryan, where you at? Take a bite. Take a bite. Take a bite. It hits different on a Sunday. Come on. (laughs) How we doing? Did you take a bite? Oh, come on. Can we give him a hand? There's something about Chick-fil-A on a Sunday. But here's the thing. Truett Cathy, their founder, when he was making this rule, he said, we want to be closed on a Sunday. He said, we want to give all of our employees a day where they can focus on rest and worship. That's what a Sabbath is. Now, people thought that he was absolutely crazy when he started this. One, you're in a fast food and you're going to take off one day? You're going to close for one day. Secondly, studies have shown that Sunday is the highest grossing sales day for fast food. So not only are you closing one day, but you're closing the day for fast food. People are like, you're crazy. You're never going to be able to compete with the big names that are out there unless God knew what he was doing. See, here's what I want you to see. There's a report that comes out every year. And what it looks at is the fast food average sales per store for franchises, right? Now, y'all know what's number one or else I wouldn't be doing this, right? So that's a dead giveaway. But but, but here's what I want you to see. We got number two, Raisin Cane's, 3.9. Number three, Whataburger, 3.2. Number four, In-N-Out, 3.1. Number five, McDonald's, 2.9. So again, we know what one is, but I want you all to see by how much. Five million dollars. Blew them out of the water. You're going to close a day? You're going to close the number one top grossing sales day for fast food? And you think you got a chance? That's what people are going to say if we choose a true Sabbath. You're, gonna, you're not going to rest for one day? How could could they get this done? If you get anything from this sermon series, get this. God blesses obedience. God blesses obedience. And I'm here to tell someone that he can do more with your six than we ever could with our seven. If you're feeling tired, if you're feeling burnt out, if you're feeling exhausted, if you're feeling depleted, God is just saying, come back to me. Spend intentional, genuine time with me. Give me spiritual rhythm that I designed you to walk in. A Sabbath. It's interesting, there was a 
There's actually a time in France, they were going through a, a, a French revolution, and they said they needed more. I need more. I need more things. I need more, more productivity. And so they actually moved away from a seven-day work week, and they went to a 10-day work week. You all know what happened? The study showed that suicide rates went through the roof. Productivity actually plummeted, and their entire economy crashed. Why? Because what I want you to understand today is that we don't need more hours. We don't need more productivity. We need more time with Jesus. Are you all with me today? We don't need more hours. We don't need more things. We don't need more productivity. We don't need to hustle more. We don't need to work harder. We don't need any of that. We need more intentional, genuine, quality time with Jesus. We got to understand the weight of this and we got to get back to the spiritual rhythm or you got to start the spiritual rhythm of practicing a Sabbath. So where do you even start? How do I even practice the Sabbath? Well, here's the first thing that I want you to think about. What changes would I need to make to my schedule to be obedient to God's command and take a Sabbath? I want you to spend some time truly reflecting on this. Remember, what we're looking for is a 24-hour period. That's all God's looking for. One day. And again, it's going to take some self-control. It's going to take some discipline. It's going to take some preparation. It's going to take some pruning. We'll probably have to cut back on some things. But when we cut back, then we're able to see new fruit. What changes would need to be made for you to practice a Sabbath? Now, here's the second thing I want you to do. After you focus on that and you figure it out, I want you to pick a day. It doesn't matter what day. Here's the one thing as we're talking through this. Don't get legalistic with it and don't overcomplicate it. It doesn't matter if you work weekends. It doesn't have to be a Sunday. It doesn't have to be a Saturday. All he's looking for is 24 hours, but it's a full 24 hours. See, actually, there's a, there's a best practice. One of the, the biggest questions that I get is, does it have to be the same day? Like if my, if my Sabbath is Friday, it's from when I wake up to when I go to sleep. And no, one of the best practices that John Mark Comer gives us in the book, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry, I love it. He's a pastor. He's off on Friday. He says he and his family, they actually start their Sabbath Thursday night. So at 6 p.m., they say that they, they make the biggest meal that they, that they make for the week. And that the family, they spend time cooking together and, and delighting in the family and, 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 and the things of God and their blessings, Right? And then they sit down and they light a couple candles at the dinner table and they talk about their week and they talk about the, the goodness of God and they, they just reflect on family and they're, they're spending intentional time together resting and, 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 and being intentional, doing something other than hurry and busyness. And then after that, they said that they make this massive cookie cake and they dump an entire tub of ice cream on top. I got some people that want to try a Sabbath now, don't you? We'll talk about gluttony later. No. <laughs> That's a whole nother one. <laughs> but it's real intentional time. And then after that, they go to sleep. That's part of resting. That's okay. Maybe they don't set their alarms. Don't overcomplicate it. For me personally, mine and, and my wife Cass, ours is on Friday. And it's intentional and it's concrete. We don't touch it. It's there every single week. And here's the thing, emergencies will come up. Right? Life happens, but it's so important to us and our individual health. Because here's the thing. If we're not healthy, we're not going to contribute healthy things to the marriage, right? But it's so important to us that if something happens on that day, we'll make sure that we move it. We have to have, to have this spiritual rhythm in our life. Now, one of the most popular questions that I get about this is, what do I do on the Sabbath? Anybody, anybody curious right now? What do, I, what do I even do? Well, I want to flip the paradigm. That's a great question, but the question we should be asking is, what do I not do on the Sabbath? Remember, it's a stopping day. It's a day to, to stop wanting, stop working, stop worrying. So we do no work. We don't text the, the, the work person back about work things. We don't email back. We don't, we don't open our computers to check in. There's no work. We rest and we worship. And now let me interject this. The Sabbath isn't the same thing as a day off. Let me be very clear on that. The Sabbath is not the same as a day off. See, a day off 
is just when we're not working for our employer. But y'all know we work, right? Like our day off, that's the day we, we tidy up the house. That's the day that we do our, our yard work. That's the day where we pay our bills. We run our errands. We, 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 we work on those days off. We don't rest. But the Sabbath is there for two things. The Sabbath is there for rest and it's there for worship. And we need these things. We need to be able to rest to truly delight in the Lord and the blessings that he has given us, to to worship and thank him for all that he has done in our lives. And you might say, well, how do I do that? However, you rest well. Again, I don't want to overcomplicate it and I don't want to get legalistic with it. And I made a list that y'all can get started with, even if you want to just week by week, just check these off. But here's something, and you can grow it from here. Maybe just ask God, God, reveal to me how I rest in your presence the most. Now here's a list, just some some things to get started. Spend time in prayer, spend time in worship, eat well, cook something, play, hike, go out on the lake, fish, read a book, golf, paint, ride a bike, walk, take a nap, laugh, spend time with kids or grandkids, spend time with friends, spend time with your spouse, watch a movie, go to a park. This is a day to be enjoyed. This is a day to delight and be refilled This is a day to rest. This is a day to distance yourself from hurry and from busyness and draw closer to God. This is a a day that we cannot afford to miss. So I'm gonna get you all out here with a take-home challenge. Now remember, these are challenges. Here it is. For the rest of the year, take one Sabbath day off per week where there is no work. If y'all are looking for life change, if y'all are looking for real transformation in your life, for the rest of 2022, take one day per week. As one of your pastors, trust me in this, you will see a massive life change. You will begin to live an unhurried life a life that's the opposite of busyness, a life that's filled with love, with joy, with peace, with patience. And God's just after, man, he's just after your obedience. Remember, God can do more with your six than we ever could with our seven. We don't need more time. We don't need more hours. We don't need more productivity. We don't need more things. We need more Jesus. I just feel in my heart right now that there's some people in this room that God's been tugging at your heart. God's been tugging at your heart. And the first step is he's saying, give me your heart first. And that obedience is making that step to give your heart to him. Maybe that obedience that you need to walk in is saying, I'm breaking these chains and God, I'm coming with you. We don't ever want to end a service without giving you that opportunity. God blesses obedience. It's time to stop running. It's time to start, stop looking for for other things to fill that void. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. It always has, it always will be Jesus. And right now you can make that decision to give your life, give your heart to him and start walking in the fulfilled design that he created you to walk in. So I'd love for every head to be bowed, every eye closed all across this room. And if you would, would you put your hand over your heart as a symbol of your soul? And I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, dear Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose from the grave. I believe your blood washes away all my sins. Come be a part of my life. Today, I commit my life to you. I am chosen. I am loved. I am forgiven. And I matter. 
Holy Spirit, I pray right now that you flood the hearts and the minds of every single person in this room. I pray any shame, any condemnation, anyone who's feeling like I'm not worthy of the sacrifice that you sent their son for them, leave in the name of Jesus and that the fruits of your spirit fill them right now, Father. Love, joy, peace, Father. With every head still bowed, every eye still closed, if you made that decision for the first time and you're committing your life to Jesus, or maybe you had a relationship with Jesus, but you strayed away from the path a little bit and you wanna rededicate your life to Jesus. If either of those were you, in just a second, I'm gonna ask you to do something really big and really bold. In just a second, I'm gonna ask you to raise your hand. And you might say, Tyler, why would you do that? Can I tell you it's for two reasons. One, the first reason, every head's bowed, every eye's closed right now. It's just me, you, and God, but I want that visual because I wanna be praying for you in this new journey of yours. But the second reason, as a reason for you to get excited. The second reason is this is your time. This is your time to tell your past that it has no hold on your future. This is your time to tell that devil that he, has, he does not dictate where you're going. This is your time to tell your heavenly father, I'm done searching and I'm coming home to you. So with every head still bowed and every eye still closed, if that was you today, either one of those, I'm gonna count to three and I want you to boldly raise your hand because we're gonna celebrate. One, no looking around. Two, God just wants obedience. Don't miss an opportunity to be obedient. And three, if that was you today, would you raise your hand? Thank you, I see your hand, I see your hand, I see your hand, I see your hand, I see your hand in the back, I see your hand in the back, thank you, Jesus. I see your hand over here, thank you, Jesus. Anybody else? Anybody else? Come on, anybody else? Don't miss this opportunity for obedience. I feel there's one more out there, come on. Anybody else? Anybody else? Come on, church, can we celebrate today? Come on, we can do better than that, come on. People joined our family of faith. Come on. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, ring and ding that bell so you never miss a video or a live stream. And give this a share to one of your friends. And remember, we go live every single Sunday. Till next time, pray God's peace.